And right now, this is me loving on every one of you who, who've been touched and who've never said anything. This is me loving on each and every one of you who know somebody who's been touched and never said anything. For those of you who feel like you can't come forward because you'll get in trouble or you'll get the other person in trouble or whatever your apprehension or your fear may be, this is me loving on you because I've been there. I've gone through it. And I turned out to be an amazing woman. What's up, bunnies? Thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Today's story is not going to be as friendly as the first story I told. So if you have children in the room with you or anybody who is uncomfortable with this topic, then I suggest you leave the room and find someplace private to watch this video. As you can see, the comments are disabled. That means no commenting. I just wanted to share my story and the first thing I want to say before I get into this is I have been apprehensive for a very long time about sharing this story and the main reason is because I was scared. I was scared. I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want anybody to look at me in a different way than they've been looking at me. Mostly I just didn't want to be judged. People these days have a tendency to judge others very very harshly mind you when they come out and tell their story my point of view is my story is my story i went through it me not you there may be other people out there who've gone through a similar story but nobody has experienced my journey like me i am the only person fit to tell this story and the reason why i've chosen to share my stories that are going to come this is won't be the only one the reason why I've chosen to share these stories is the primary reason is because I want it to help somebody else. There are too many people who are keeping silent about these types of issues and that's why they continue. Nobody wants to talk about it. Shh, be quiet. Don't tell nobody. Just we're going to pray over it and we're going to get it done with and that's going to be the end of it. Nobody's offering counseling to these children. Nobody's offering a listening ear to these children. They can't get it off their chest. So they grow up with it. And yes, I'm talking about me. They grow up with it and they live with it and they deal with it. And they go through a lot of hardships because they were never able to say how they felt. They were never able, never able to tell someone what happened to them so that there's knowledge that's passed on. The reason I'm sharing this story is because I want to encourage anyone, young kids, boys, girls, adults, teenagers, whoever, if somebody is touching you, tell somebody. I don't care who it is, tell somebody. Somebody needs to know. Don't keep it to yourself because you'll just suffer. The second thing I wanna say is parents, guardians, grandparents, aunts, uncles, if you are in charge of a child or you're taking care of a young child and they come to you and they tell you that someone is touching them believe them <laughs> there are too many people that i know personally who've been molested or raped and have tried to tell someone in the family and they don't believe them because they're children you have to stop thinking that children are stupid that's the main reason why things like this happen and nothing gets done because you think the child is dumb 
and you think that they're telling you this to get attention when half the time they're telling the truth. So the reason why I'm sharing my story today is for those two reasons, to let people know who have been molested that you're not alone. And you don't have to stay there. You don't have to be miserable. You don't have to live a crappy life. And you'll find out that I'm not a depressed person. I'm not on any medications for depression, anxiety, nothing. Suicidal thoughts, it just doesn't happen. When I was younger, yeah, I was going through it. Something terrible. But I still didn't go see a therapist. I didn't go get any medication. And I didn't end up getting any kind of help. I had to seek help from God. And we're going to get to that. So I just wanted to say that disclaimer that it took me a long while to decide to share this story. And now that I'm ready to share it, I am hoping that anybody who sees this, who is being molested, that you come forward and tell somebody. You don't have to tell me. I don't know you. Tell somebody you know. If nobody you know wants to listen, tell law enforcement. Tell somebody what's happening to you. Second thing, parents listen to your children kids are not stupid they're very very smart and if they feel like they should tell you something they should be free to do so give them that opportunity give them that space give them those open arms and ears so they feel comfortable coming to you if something like this is to happen to them so with that being said let's get into the story ever since i was a child my dad was in construction he's always been a carpenter for as long as i can remember and he also was a mechanic he worked for himself. He didn't work for a company or anything like that. He owned his own business. He worked for himself. And he would hire workers every now and then to work with him. Usually men. There was one particular guy when I was 11 years old that my dad was working with. And I'm not going to say his name to protect his identity. But he knows who he is. If he ever sees this video, he knows who he is. He was working with my dad for a little while. And I overheard my parents talking in their bedroom. Now, I was living in Harvey at the time in Illinois. It's a suburb right outside the city. And the walls were like paper thin. You could hear everything. And when my parents were in their room, because the living room was right next to their bedroom pretty much, while we're sitting there watching TV, we can hear my parents talking, discussing things. And that's another thing. Let's just pause right here. If your children are home, don't have adult discussions, period. They're gonna find a way to hear what you're saying. Even if they have to go in their closet and hold a cup up to the thing, I'm just letting you know, your kids know what you're talking about. We're not stupid. Even at 11, I knew what my parents were talking about. I knew what they were arguing about. I knew half of what was going on almost all the time because we're listening. You can think that you can have an adult conversation in front of your kids and they have no idea what you're talking about, but they know. Let's just be real, they know. So while I tell you guys this story, I'm going to continue braiding my hair. So this guy comes to live with us because I think his wife kicked him out or something. He was always getting into arguments with his wife for some reason. And she was always kicking him out and he didn't have anywhere to go. So I heard my parents discussing him coming to stay with us. And I heard my mom say, no, that's not a good idea. We have two young girls. Excuse me. I just spit. Um, we have two young girls. That's not a good idea. And my dad fought for this guy. You know, ah, he's trustworthy. He's my friend. He's not going to do anything. I can guarantee it. Blah, blah, blah. Co-signing for dude. Right? No, I didn't just cut my hair. Co-signing for him. You know, making it seem like, no, it's going to be okay. It's not a big deal. He's just going to come stay with us for a little while until things blow over and then he's going to go back home. So eventually my mom concedes. All right, fine, because she trusts my dad. And we'll get into that in another story. So this dude comes to live with us. Uh, initially, he goes and stays in my brother's room with my brother. Now, we had a, technically it was a four-bedroom house. It was my parents' room, my sister and I's room, and then my brother had his own room toward the back of the house close to the, where the basement stairs were. But there was also a, a tiny bedroom downstairs in the basement. And um, so... I guess you could say four bedrooms or three and a half because that bedroom downstairs was super duper small. But anyway, I digress. So this guy comes to live with us. He stays in my brother's room initially. And everything is cool in the beginning. They introduce us to him. We see him. It's all good. After a little while, him and my dad used to get up really, really early. Him and my dad used to get up really, really early to go to work. Uh, my dad has always believed early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. So he was always up before the sun and in bed before the sun went down. So they get up really early and they go to work. And that was the norm for them. There was one occasion that I remember where he, the guy who was staying with us, 
he used to, he had another job that he was working too. So he, and I think he worked it overnight. I'm not sure, but he would come home like extra early in the morning on days when he wasn't working with my dad. And he came home ultra early one day. And as he walked past my bedroom, my, we kept our doors open. My dad has never been the type to allow us to close our doors. He didn't like closed or locked doors. He needs to know what's going on in his house at all times. So my door was open and the bed was right next to the door. And as he was coming in the house, he walked by and I'm a very light sleeper. I always have been. The slightest noise wakes me up. Why? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Maybe something happened to me younger on that I don't remember that I blocked out. I don't know. But I, I woke up when I heard him come through the front door. And as he walked past my bedroom, he kind of leaned in and pushed his hand under my pillow. And then he kind of like snuck out and left. And I was like, what the heck? Like, what did he just do? And I was, I was scared. So I didn't know what he did. So I reached under my pillow and I feel something crackly. I don't know what it is. And I, I pull it out and it's a piece of candy. It's one of my favorite pieces of candy, actually. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. Mind you, I'm 11. I don't think nothing of it. Oh, that's sweet. That's so nice. He gave me my favorite piece of candy. He did that almost every other day, every two, three days. Don't quote me. It was a long time ago. But he would do things like that to start off. And I guess that was to... I don't know, acclimate me to the fact that he wanted to do other things. I have no idea. It escalated from there. Um, there was a time when I was walking to the kitchen and the way the house was set up, you walk straight to the, to the back of the house. And just before you get to my brother's bedroom, you curve right and you end up in the kitchen. But when you do that, you can still see my brother's bedroom. And I was walking into the kitchen one day and I heard something like that. So I stopped and I took a step back and I looked, not knowing what was going on or who was making noise at me because I didn't know he was home that day. And when I stepped back and I stepped back and I looked, this guy was nude all the way to the bottom and completely and utterly erect. Now, again, I'm 11. I've never seen anything like that before. So I have no idea what I'm looking at. I know that he's naked, but it does nothing for me because I'm 11. I've never experienced any of that before. So I thought that was kind of weird. I kind of laughed at it and I kept doing what I was doing. There was one time uh, shortly after that where we were sitting at the dining room table eating and he was sitting to my right. I was sitting here. My brother was sitting across from me and we were all eating dinner and he would wink at me all the time. And I thought that it was just his tick because he had this tick that made him blink like this extra times for no reason. So I thought that was just his thing. Like I didn't take it as anything sexual because again, I'm a kid. I have no idea what sex is. So, but he used to like to do that to me. He would wink outside of his tick. And I was like, okay, again, I'm a kid. I don't know any better. We haven't had the birds and the bee discussion because for certain reasons that we'll discuss in another video. So he whispered something to me. And I didn't know what he said. So I leaned in and I said, what? And he was like, look under the table. So I looked under the table and he's got this piece of paper in his hand. He hands it to me. So I take it and I open it and it says, I think he said, I like you or something like that. But my penis is too big for your private. That's exactly what it said, if I'm not mistaken. I remember that my penis is too big for your private part because it didn't click to me. I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know what a penis was. I knew what my private was, but I didn't know what, his, what a penis was. So I was like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand what you're trying to say. That got blown over. I didn't tell anybody anything because my father wasn't always the nicest guy. Let's just put it that way. So I didn't feel comfortable going to him with this information, especially when I heard him defending this man to my mom. So I felt like if I went and said anything to him, I would get in trouble. And that's only because of the trend my dad created when it came to me. But again, that's something we'll discuss in another video. I didn't tell anybody anything because I didn't see anything inappropriate or wrong with what he, was, what he was doing because I didn't know any better. We let that go and I asked my brother later on, mind you, my brother's two years younger than me. If I'm 11, he's like eight. He has no idea. So I asked him, I was like, what is a penis? And he was like, I don't know. We're playing video games. So we just kept playing, like we're kids. So there was another instance where I think I was downstairs doing laundry in the basement and he came down there for something and he kind of 
that's when he made his move on me. He he grabbed on me and touched on me and, you know, I could get real detailed with it, but I'm not. Um, he never actually penetrated me because, like he said, his thing was way too big for me. I was very tiny and he was a Caribbean man that was like 6'4". So he would have definitely hurt me a lot. He touched on me a little bit and then that was it. And then there was another time when um, he called me into the room for something. Again, he was stark naked and he called me into the room for something and he told me to look down and I looked down and I was like what's that and he was like that's my penis and I was like oh I didn't I didn't know I had no idea that men had penises welcome to adult life <laughs> like I feel like you're teaching me something new right now so he encouraged me to play with it and me being the inquisitive kid that I am and not knowing that this is something I'm not supposed to be doing I did what he asked me to do And he called himself trying to, you know, put his hands inside of me or whatever, but that didn't feel like anything to me because I'm a kid. I've never had any of that done to me before, so I have, I have no idea what I'm feeling. He enjoyed it very much. That happened right there in that uh, bedroom. And then it slowly escalated from there to him, you know, grinding on me and um, bending me over and trying to penetrate me. and then trying to go for my butthole because the, the other one wasn't working and this went on for some time I can't even say how long it went on because I don't remember honestly that whole part of my life is a little bit of a blur and obviously you can you can tell why but this went on for quite some time and I think my older sister might have find found out because I was coming out of the basement one day from our usual grinding session where he would actually climax like this is my thing like he would actually climax when he was grinding on me and that always made me feel like dude like I don't I don't I don't know what a climax is like I don't know I didn't know what was happening I didn't know I, I really didn't and I can I can be honest and say I really had no idea what was happening I just thought I was supposed to do what he told me to do because I was always told to respect my elders and do what I'm told and not to say anything so I feel like as a kid who has a very controlling and domineering father that I should just do what I'm told. And this is another man. So same rules apply. That's, that's how I felt inside my head. So I was coming out of the basement one day and my older sister, she was two years older than me. She is two years older than me. She saw me coming out of the basement and she was like, is that man touching on you? And I was like, shh, be quiet. You're going to get me in trouble. And she was like, oh, uh-uh. And she rent my sister. So uh, if she's watching this, she knows. She's real. Woo! Like, you don't want to get her upset. But she immediately ran and she told my mom. And I'm screaming because I'm thinking I'm getting ready to die. Like, my parents are getting ready to light me on fire with spankings. Like, I, I thought for sure my life was getting ready to be over. Because I didn't know that he was doing anything wrong. I just knew I was supposed to be doing what I was told because I'm a child and I'm supposed to follow the rules and do what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, no, she went and she immediately told my mom and my mom started, she was livid. And I don't even know if he was still there or not, but yeah, he was. As he was coming out of the basement, my mom was hitting him and punching him and she was very, very angry with him. And he, he had already packed up his stuff. I don't even know how he did it. It was like Superman style. He already had his little suitcase packed up. He got in his car and he left because he knew when my dad got home, he wasn't going to be alive anymore. So he left. My dad did eventually come home. My mom told him what had happened and he grabbed his shotgun because my dad is, he was always a hunter. Hunter, he always has his guns with him. He grabbed his gun, assembled it, got in the Suburban and went off after dude. He came back a few hours later um, saying that he couldn't find him. But they told me to get dressed. My mother immediately took me in the bedroom. And uh, I thought she was going to spank me. But she told me to lay on the bed and open my legs. And I thought she was going to like hurt me. I didn't know what was happening. But um, my mom has been a nurse 
since I was a baby. Since before I was a baby, actually. Before I was even born, my mom was a nurse. And she was actually just checking to make sure my hymen hadn't been broken, that he hadn't actually penetrated me. Which he didn't. He never did. He literally was just molesting me and touching me and doing things inappropriately with me that he shouldn't have been doing. So she was relieved and she said, I just wanted to make sure that you were still a virgin, but, you know, put some clothes on because we're going to go to the police station. And we went and we made a report. And they never asked me what exactly happened. The officer never addressed me. My parents are the ones who told them pretty much what was going on, the dude's name and where he lived and how long he'd worked with my dad and how long he lived with us and blah, blah, blah. But nobody ever asked me anything. Nobody asked me what happened. Nobody asked me if I was okay. Nobody did any of that. And I'm an 11 year old girl and I'm shattered because a part of me really liked this guy. I'm, I can't even lie. I'm not even going to sit here and, and bullshit y'all right now. Excuse my French, but that's how I feel. Like I felt like he was my boyfriend or something because that's what he kept telling me. He was telling me that he loved me. He was telling me that I was his girlfriend. He was telling me, he was buying me things and giving me money and all the things you do to gain a kid's trust, he did to me. So it made me feel like what he was doing was okay because he was rewarding me for my good behavior. Like he was, every time I came home from school, there was a, a popsicle, one of my favorite popsicles in the freezer for me. And there was always some candy underneath my pillow and he was always handing me money and to go to the store and buy candy with or whatever like I had started to like this guy and I didn't care what he was doing because he gave me what I wanted he gave me love he gave me affection and that's how I felt as a kid because there was that void for me and like I said we're going to get into that story about um you know how I grew up in my family and all that so he was giving me things that I felt like I needed you know love and affection and attention and um so whatever he was doing I didn't care about I just wanted to make sure that I kept getting my candy and my money they didn't actually catch him they I think they found him in Pennsylvania some years later but um he ended up going to jail for a completely unrelated crime and I wasn't allowed like we went back home and everything went back to normal like Nobody noticed that the 11 year old was now depressed and upset and angry and writing really angry words on pieces of paper and burning them like nobody realized that I had started to sink. And it was kind of crazy because I was like, what am I going through? Like, what's happening to me? I had no idea. I was just I was angry all the time. I was angry all the time. And if you ask me why, I couldn't tell you. I stopped smiling. I stopped being friendly. I was just miserable all the time and I can't say it's because of that I really don't know why I just I sunk you know I feel like I may have needed some therapy like somebody needed to give me a counselor to talk to or something somebody to get that off my chest so that I wouldn't have to have it with me for the rest of my life especially as a kid like I was super sensitive as a kid and I was very intelligent very inquisitive so I, I needed somebody to talk to. I really did. I needed I needed therapy and I didn't get it. So I don't blame my parents for that. We couldn't afford it. I get it. But um, I'm sharing this story today, like I said in the very beginning, because I want other people to know if you've been touched or molested or if somebody has done something to you. Mind you, I left the gory details out. I'm, I expect you guys to just use your imagination. This was a 32-year-old man and I was 11. So um, if you've been touched or you know somebody who's been touched or molested come forward there's no reason to stay silent about it because being quiet about it just keeps making it okay for these men to run around touching little girls or for these grown women and run around touching little boys and little girls like the more we keep silent about these things that are happening the more it's going to happen so somebody needs to break that cycle say something to somebody if somebody starts touching you, scream, holler, bite, kick, fight, do whatever you got to do so that this doesn't happen. And I know personally that sometimes it can happen within the family. Sometimes your uncle is touching on you. Sometimes, you know, your cousins are touching on you. Sometimes people in your family are doing things to you they shouldn't be doing. Still, fight. Tell somebody. Don't keep that to yourself because it ends up eating away at you inside and then you can't live a happy life because you've got all this pressure 
on your chest and on your shoulders and you don't know who to talk to about it. Get some help. Go get a therapist or a counselor. Go get somebody that you can talk to about what has happened to you. Bring awareness to the fact so that not only kids can be aware of how they can prevent these things from happening, but adults can think with their brain stems. If you have young girls in the house, do not bring a strange man into your home. If you have young boys, do not bring a strange woman into your home. Don't put anything past anybody just because you think you can trust them. My dad thought he could trust this guy. And we trusted the fact that he thought he could trust this guy. And he tried touching me and my older sister. She wasn't having it though. She was 13. She was like, oh no, you're not touching on me. But I was a little bit more impressionable because of what I had gone through up to that point. I say all of this to say... If any of this is going on, if you suspect that it's going on, parents, guardians, if you have young children around you or children in general around you, make sure that they're comfortable coming to you and talking to you about anything. Educate children on sex, on what's appropriate and what's not appropriate at their age. Educate them. If it happened to me at 11, it's happening to kids younger than that. I hope you guys understand that these things happen to kids younger than 11 years old because just go watch TV and get out of my face. Like, no, kids get curious. They mess around with things. They mess around with themselves. They mess around with each other. The minute you see things like this happening, don't punish the child. That makes them fearful of telling you anything. Educate them. Obviously, if your kid is touching themselves and other people, and I'm not talking about babies who play with their wiener. I'm talking about Kids who are five, six years old can talk, can understand, can use their brain to think. If you see these types of things start to go on, educate them. Hey, where'd you learn that? Who taught you that? Is that something you learned in school? Or is that something that little Billy taught you? Or try to pull it out of them and have that conversation and let them know that's okay for you to touch yourself, you know, to experiment, to find out your body and everything. It's normal. We all do it. Stop acting like this is some big sin. It really isn't. Everybody does it. And the more you make your kid feel like it's terrible and they're going to go to hell for it, they're just going to do it in private. We have to learn how to talk and communicate with our kids. Again, they're not stupid. I wasn't stupid. Not at 11 years old. I was very, very smart. So I hope this story reaches who it needs to reach. And I want you guys to understand that I am not a depressed woman. I'm not holding on to this story. I'm not upset at this young man for what he did. There's a lot of ignorance when it comes to molestation. A lot of people think it's not that big a deal. It is a big deal. It's a psychological deal. Especially when you're a kid and you're seeing penises for the first time. That should not be when I saw my first penis. Let's just be real. Use your brain Talk to your children. Don't always think that if they say something sexual, it's worth a punishment. I remember one time I was uh, in school. I went to a private school, seven-day Adventist school. Hello. And there was a young boy in my class. I'm not going to say his name, but he knows who he is if he remembers this story. He said the word masturbate. He was like, do you know what masturbate means? And I was like, no. And he was like, um, go ask your mom or go look it up or something like that. We didn't have Google back then. This was when I was young, young. This was in the early 90s. And so when my mom and dad came to pick us up, I got in the car and I was like, mommy, what does masturbate mean? And she went, what? Where did you hear that? Bad reaction, mom. Bad reaction, mom. Pump the brakes. That should not be your reaction. That immediately made me regret that I said anything. I thought I was going to get in trouble. And she said, that's not something you need to know about. Like, who said that? Who said that? So I can go tell the teacher. And I was like, nah, see, now you're trying to snitch. And I'm not trying to get beat up for being a snitch. I just want to know what it is. If your child comes to you and says, mom, what does masturbate mean? It's time for a lesson. This is a teaching moment. This is the time when you can educate your child on something that's real. Masturbation is not uh, mystical and mythical. And, you know, eh, it's not some floating piece of crap. Like, masturbation is real. Millions of kids masturbate. Kids masturbate. Why? Because they're growing. Their hormones are flowing. They're doing stuff. They're figuring things out with their own body. So if you have an aversion to it, you have to put that aside because your child, you're raising a human being. You don't want this human being to grow up with the wrong idea about the wrong things. So if you, wanna, if you, if you hear your child ask you what's masturbation, what's a penis, what's a vagina, what's whatever, educate your child. Human anatomy. There's nothing sinful about human anatomy. I've been rambling for a minute. I just wanted to make sure that this message reaches whoever it needs to reach. I just, I hope that this brings awareness and I hope that it brings knowledge. 
and I hope that it brings hope to somebody who feels like they don't know what to do because they've been touched, especially when you're a Christian. I was born and raised in the Seventh Day Adventist religion, okay? And if you don't know what that is, they call us a cult. And there's a reason for that. Because this religion is very, very cultish. Very cultish. And extremely traditional. So, as I grew older, just because I was told that I was a part of this religion doesn't mean that this religion is a part of me. And it never has been. I've always been a black sheep. And that I, I don't have a problem with that. I don't see anything wrong with that. That's just who I am. So as I grew older and I started reading the Bible for myself and praying for myself and developing a relationship with God on my own, I realized I'm not a Seventh-day Adventist at all. I don't believe half the things that they believe. I am a Christian. I follow Jesus Christ and his example. And above all, he says, love one another. So my goal is to love everybody, to love, just to act in love. When I see people who are hurting, I try to love them. When I see people who are mean, I try to love them. When I see people who are, you know, just lovable people, I try to love them. Like, And right now, this is me loving on every one of you who, who've been touched and who've never said anything. This is me loving on each and every one of you who know somebody who's been touched and never said anything. For those of you who feel like you can't come forward because you'll get in trouble or you'll get the other person in trouble or whatever your apprehension or your fear may be, this is me loving on you because I've been there. I've gone through it. And I turned out to be an amazing woman. I'm very happy with my life right now. I took this spiritual journey inside myself. I've learned to love myself regardless of what happened to me because my past does not define who I am right now. I'm a very, very strong woman and I can take a lot. And y'all are going to find out as we go through these down the rabbit hole videos, you're going to come to find that I've been through hell, but I am still standing. I am not going to be a victim of my circumstance. I am not going to be a victim of my past. I am not going to be a victim in general. I am a conqueror and I know it. I'm a champion. And I'm going to keep being a champion. So that's the re another reason why I disable the comments on these videos is because I need you guys to understand that I don't live in my past anymore. I'm sharing these stories to try and help someone else. Make sure you come forward. Make sure you discuss things with your children. Make sure they know that they can come to you with anything. Because if they can't, chances are they're holding on to something that's really, really hurting them. And they have to be able to come forward and talk to you about it as their parent. It is your job to guide them. It's your job to raise them. It's your job to help them grow into who they are. And you don't want your child as young as 8, 9, 10, 11 years old holding on to pain and anger. Because they grow up to be angry adults. I grew up to be an angry adult. It's only within the last four to five years that I've started being a more happy person. But I was holding on to a lot of pain because I could never voice exactly how I felt because somebody was always judging me at this point in my life judge me if you want my journey is mine and I own it but I made it through I hope that this story was helpful and I hope that it does reach whoever it's supposed to reach and until the next story I'll see you guys on the flip side hopefully I'll be done with my hair